Hello, it's Susan Fouché. Voices for Learning, where we help you grow as a voice actor. Welcome. I am going to talk today about Fiverr commercial rights versus broadcast rights. So, <laughs> sorry it escaped me. On Fridays, I wake up very early and I have a meeting that I go to every single Friday. It starts at 6.45 in the morning. It is a wonderful meeting. I love it. I have so many great friends there that I've made and I ah, just kept over the years, but oh my gosh, it is ridiculous. By the end of the week, I am so tired. And right now, I really need a nap. So pardon me. But I wanted to talk about commercial rights versus uh, broadcast rights and when to use them, when to... Uh, charge them, kind of like what's the situation, uh, using them, applying them, and how much should you charge? So let's go ahead and tackle that first question. What the heck are they? So basically, it's not what you think. Commercial rights, broadcast rights. Broadcast rights means that your voiceover whatever intellectual property that you have sold your client, which is your voiceover, is going to be broadcast over lots and lots and lots of big geographical places. So like if you do a voiceover recording for a internet ad, that's going to be broadcast over the entire world. If you do a voiceover recording for a television ad, a radio ad, Basically, like anything that's being broadcast and anything that's also marketing something else. So in other words, like when they're making money off of your voice, you charge broadcast rights. And that's the that's the um, the larger fee. So like, let's say you charge fifty dollars for broadcast rights. Commercial rights are going to be lower. So what are commercial rights? Commercial rights are basically um, any any time that your voiceover is being used to indirectly make your client money. So, for example, if you record a voiceover for an e-learning course, no, your client is not necessarily making money off of that course. Like that course is not making them money. They're not selling anything off of your voice on that e-learning course, like if it's, you know, an internal, you know, onboarding course about like, here's our different insurance plans. Don't sexually harass anybody, you know, stay off Facebook, whatever the security policies, how to use the Xerox machine. No, they're not making any money off of your voice. However, you are helping them. You are indirectly saving them money making them money. I mean, e-learning is a pretty big industry. And at this point, I mean, they say it's like $43 billion or something. I don't know what the, the statistic is today. But, um, you know, because you lended your voice, you sold your voice to that e-learning course, they didn't have to hire a trainer to redo that course every single time a new hire comes on board. So indirectly, you're making them money. And that is commercial rights. That's when you apply your commercial rights. And so since they're not necessarily making money off of your voice, but they kind of are, <laughs> it's treated a little bit differently. So we don't charge as much for those. Now, I'll tell you how much I charge for, for my stuff um, for on, on Fiverr anyway, since this is Fiverr Friday. Um, I charge $50. $50 for broadcast rights, and then I charge $25 for commercial rights. Now, is there ever a time where you don't charge any rights at all? Yes, there are times when you don't charge any rights at all. And those times would be like if you were doing something for just like a personal uh, thing that never was going to be used anywhere else. So for example, one time I got hired to do like a little um, voiceover about like a really cute little like story about how two people met and fell in love and got married. And it was just played at their wedding. It was, and it was really funny. It was cute. It had all these little like funny little jokes in it. They didn't make any money off of that. And it was a, like a total, you know, cheesy little like home movie, you know, mom and dad 
just wanted to have like something little fun, I think, for the rehearsal dinner. So I didn't charge broadcast rights for that or commercial rights for that because they didn't make any money off of it. And it was just like a really sweet little thing. Um, can you waive the commercial rights and the broadcast right fees? Yeah, of course you can waive it. You know, um, you know, you can still like check the box that you're, that you're charging it or, or saying that, you know, broadcast rights are included, but you don't necessarily have to charge it. So, um, I guess if you are checking the boxes, then you would just don't check the box, but then in the like description where you're actually creating the offer, uh, just say, you know, broadcast rights or commercial rights are included up in the offer section. But uh, it, when you are negotiating with your clients, though, with like, you know, how much you're going to charge and things like that, always go ahead and give them your highest price. You know, always include like the highest price that you that you've got, like the words, the word count plus the rights and and go for that higher higher mark. That's OK. And then if you negotiate, you can just negotiate down and say, OK, well, I'll go ahead and waive it or I'll cut you a deal half off broadcast rights, commercial rights, whatever. But you do want to go ahead and charge um, commercial rights and broadcast rights really Every single time you do a voiceover, with the exception of just like a few things, what about like IVR and phone messaging? Well, that kind of like goes into a little bit of a gray detail, but I think honestly, it's okay to charge commercial rights for a phone message because it's a phone message that's like helping them. They're like, it's their brand. And especially when you've got one of these really long phone messages, that's like, you know, did you know, like the, the on cue hold, did you know that our service can save you 25% than the other guys? Or, you know, we deliver rain, sleet, snow, sunshine, anytime. Those, that's a selling point. That's helping them make money. And so I think it's completely acceptable to charge commercial rights for uh, an IVR message. Uh, especially like, I, I know I've, I've gotten hired where like, you know, I am pretending to, you know, be a live representative, but I'm not like, you know, hi, this is Harriet. I'm just calling to see if you have Medicare. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm a real person, you know, where it's the sort of like, you've gotten them robocalls, whatever you've gotten them. I do them. And guess what? If you're a voice actor, you're going to be doing them too. Um, <laughs> it's totally fine. And I think when you charge commercial rights, that is 100% appropriate, especially for those things, because they are trying to make money off of your voice. So commercial rights just basically means that they are indirectly making money off your voice. And that's the lower price. Full broadcast rights, uh, broadcast rights are, they are actually selling a product and, you know, via the internet, via television, via radio whatever medium they're broadcasting it out. And that's when you need to charge the uh, larger fee. So I hope that makes sense. And I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day. I will see you soon. Be sure to like, subscribe in the comments. There is a wonderful course called Make $20,000 on Fiverr. It's by my friend Anthony, and it's the course that I used when I got on Fiverr because I didn't know what I was doing. And I definitely made $20,000 actually pretty quickly with that course. And the course is affordable. You'll make your ROI back very quickly as well. So I can't wait to see you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.